so books 2022 releases so many good ones and today i am here in my stitch onesie to talk about my most anticipated ones let's go okay first off one for all by lily lineoff uh she is a mutual of mine on twitter and i have been waiting for this book for so long let me tell you what it's about um it's a retelling of the three musketeers uh with women and it's about a chronically ill, Ill girl with pots um let me look at up what it stands for because i forgot um pot i hadn't heard of it before it's uh postural orthos orthostatic tachycardia syndrome but the, the main character has it her name is tanya and her dad is murdered um and she is in finishing school which i don't know exactly what it is either to be honest um but then she realizes that the school is actually training young women to become musketeers and they have to protect france 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 that was a weird way of saying it and I already know that uh, this book has trigger warnings for ableism and uh, internalized ableism. But I am so looking forward to the sisterhood of the stab stab because they use swords. And they are girls having friendships. Fighting ableism. Yes. <laughs> Second is Bad at Love by Gabriela Machins, which... She's a Brazilian writer, writer. I have her other book over there, uh, like a love song, which is one of my favorite reads of to, to 2022, 2021. 2022 hasn't gotten here yet, Laura, not yet. Um, but a bad love is about this Brazilian bad boy character uh, who's in a band and he moves. Uh, Presumably to the USA. I didn't find that in the in the summary of the book, but I'm I'm thinking he goes to the USA, and there is this um, journalist Sarah who hates bad boys, and she wants to do an expose on him of sorts. But the more they spend time together, the more they fall in love with each other, and it's yes, please. Uh, I follow Gabriella on Twitter as well, and she's so sweet, she's so nice, and I just want this book so badly because Brazil! Brazilian representation! If you don't know, I am Brazil. Brazilian. <laughs> I am Brazil. Yes, I am Brazil. No. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for that. The next one is My Darkest, My Dearest Darkest, um, by Kayla Cottingham. Cottingham. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, it's cosmic horror with a haunting boarding school and sapphic romance. Would you look at that? Uh, it's about this girl, Finch, who goes to a new boarding school after she was supposed to have died in a car accident with her family. Um, but she was saved by something she doesn't quite understand. And then there is Celine, who is very suspicious of Finch. She knows there's something wrong with fucking Finch. But not enough to avoid a crush, apparently. And then one day they summon a terrible creature and then they have to, you know, find a way to stop the creature because it can consume the entire world, apparently. <laughs> I don't know much about this writer, but they also seem really nice and I am just excited for some sapphic cosmic horror romance. Like, please, give it to me. Give it to me. Next one is Once Upon a Cape Rum by Cat Cho. She has two books that I haven't read yet, but Once Upon a Cape Rum, I am getting into the K-pop scene and I love stories that deal with like famous people <laughs> and specifically stories that deal with K-pop idols. I don't know why, I'm just really into that. And it <sighs> listen, listen to this one. It's like uh, a girl whose childhood best friend goes off and becomes a, a famous K-pop star and 
then he comes back to ask her for prom. But he's not quite as she remembers him, so there's a little bit of uh, angst there, I would assume. Um, and she doesn't want the famous life. She, she's just a quiet girl. She wants to stay in, uh, connect with the people in her community, and that's it. But she can't get him off his mind. Off her mind. Dude, I love romance. It's my favorite. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't know about this either, uh, this <laughs> writer either, but I have heard of the fantasy duology that she has and I also want to read those as well, but you know, they already came out, they don't come out in 2022. Next is Ophelia After All, which is a coming of age sapphic uh, romance as well. Let me just say that um, it's by, first of all, it's by Raquel, Mar Mar Raquel Marie, um, and I just, queer, queer Latin romances, que queer Latin romances have my entire fucking heart, okay? They have my fucking heart. Um, so Ophelia, after all, is about romantic Ophelia who has a stream of endless crushes on boys until she gets a crush on the girl and Deadpool went down Dead Deadpool went down where was I? until she gets a crush on Talia Sanchez and uh, it, it, it might just send her off into a bit of an identity crisis sounds like it, it's gonna be very relatable and I I want it. I want. I want it. Next is Dauntless by Elisa A. Bonin. Bonin. Uh, it's YA queer fantasy as well. Uh, sapphic fantasy. It's uh, okay. In this world of beasts, Seti had has to protect herself and others against these creatures uh, as the assistant of a commander with a near mythical. Uh, <laughs> reputation um and that is how her world has always been her world has always been up until Tsana Tsana uh, a girl who can't communicate with the beasts so as they go as they grow closer their worlds collide and shit goes down shit 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 apparently goes down that sounds so cool that, that just, yes, please. I want it, I want it. Next is The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller. It's gothic fiction. I am getting into gothic fiction and I love it so much, so I want to read more. And finally, there are two gothic fictions here, I think. This one is about a necromancer who is torn between two choices when uh, the emperor that she the emperor that she serves dies and asks her to avenge his death by finding out who killed him and figuring out who is going to take his throne. Um, so she is torn between her own freedom or justice for the empire. Interesting. Interesting. Then. We have Tripping Arcadia by Kit Mayquist. Um, he uses he, him pronouns. Uh, it's gothic fiction as well, and it's sapphic too. Um, but it's about this med school dropout called Lena who finds a job with this very uh, illustrious, mysterious family. Um, so she starts working for them, and the more she works for them, the more she finds out that they have weird secrets and then she finds out that that this family has something to do with the downfall of her own family so she seeks revenge i love revenge stories we need more revenge stories i love that next is only a monster by vanessa lynn uh it's a ya fantasy romance and it's about joan who comes from this this family of monsters 
<laughs> but she doesn't feel like a monster, especially not around this co-worker that she likes who asks her out on a date. His name is Noah. But then she finds out that he, that he is a monster hunter and she he is after her family. And then she needs to team up with this other guy, this heir of another monster family who hates her family's guts. Enemies to love, enemies to love, enemies to lovers! Next is the Lesbianist Guide to Catholic School. Uh, it's a uh, young adult sapphic romance. It's about this girl called Yamilet Flores, Flores uh, at a new Catholic school. And she has only three priorities, making her mom proud, protecting her brother from trouble, and, uh, you know, try not to fall in love. Except the only other queer, openly queer girl in the school is so fucking good, so talented, so beautiful, so everything, that uh, that, that becomes a little bit hard. <laughs> but she can't, she can't do that because, because she doesn't want her mom to find out that she's gay. So I imagine there would be quite a bit of uh, angst there too, and I... Oh, it's gonna hurt, but it's gonna hurt good! Yes! <laughs> it's by Sonata Reyes, by the way, I forgot to say. She's, uh, they seem very nice on Twitter as well. So sweet. Next is Wrath Goddess Sing by Maya Diane. Dian. 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 I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry. Um, anyway, it's a Greek myth retelling, and I mean, I fucking love mythologies. I'm trying to get into different ones, but Greek for now is my main one. And it's, uh, they take, she takes Achilles and makes her a trans woman who gets to have the body of a woman uh, with the help of Athena. And she goes off to fight the war, the, the, the Tro uh, Tro Trojan, War of Troy, about uh, Helen. And maybe she starts falling in love with Helen. But there's trouble, because the gods are trouble, and the gods like to make schemes and play with human lives. So, a bit tense. I would, I would think a bit, a bit tense. Feels like it's gonna wreck me too. We'll see. Uh, the next is Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing Abdullah right. It's an adult fantasy inspired on one of the tales from One Thousand and One Nights, uh, specifically the one Aladdin, <laughs> the the one that inspired Aladdin. Uh, so we have. Luli, who, who uh, takes, whose life takes a turn when she saves this cowardly prince and draws the attention of his father, the sultan, um, and sh so she's tasked with retrieving this lamp uh, that has the power to revive barren land, uh, and she has to go with uh, the older brother. And in this dangerous journey, she might find that everything she thought was, is not, actually. And she needs to find out who she wants to be in this new reality of hers. So, again, interesting. Next is Flip the Script by Lila Lee. <sighs> I wanted I'll Be the One by the same writer. For so long and I still couldn't get it because it doesn't sell over here it only sells on Amazon and it's just anyway as the actress of this new Korean drama Hana is expected to fake a romance between herself and her co-star a heartthrob called Brian Yoon Yun, Yu um but they also bring in this girl who is another actress who's supposed to challenge her role in the series as the love interest of Brian's character. And she already knows this girl. 
there might be some rivalry there. I don't know. But, uh, then she, she's a bit torn between the, 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 the guy and, uh, this new girl. There is, maybe she might be falling for her on-screen rival, basically. Gotta love that. Gotta love the tension. Ah! Then, then, Ace is Wild by Amanda DeWitt. I am also mutes, mutes with her on Twitter. Hi. Uh, it's a YA contemporary and it's about Jack, who is described as a modern day Kaz Brecker, uh, who finds this group of Ace teens to make a, uh, to pull off the heist just to prove to his mother that he was set up by a rival casino owner. Asexual rap, though. The asexual rap. I am so here for it. Please. I want, I want it so bad. I want it so bad. It doesn't have a cover yet, though, as far as I know. Then, this is why they hate us. Aaron H. Asevish. Uh... It's a young adult gay romance. Queer Latin A books, people. Queer Latin A books. Uh, it's about Inhiki who wants to get over his crush by getting with a few other people, which might not be the healthiest option for him. Um, so it takes him a while, but he figures out that uh, doing that is not the best way to get over his crush. But you know, he's not even out yet. So, living his truth might be a little bit harder than it seems. That sounds like a fantastic coming-of-age story, too. I want that. I want that. Then we have So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lukens, whose other book I also want to read. <sighs> okay, but this one is a fantasy romance. I think it would fall onto... No, it's still YA. Uh, the character is 17, going on 18. Um, so Arek completes a prophecy to save his kingdom. What now? What now? Um, well, he has to take the throne because the actual Harris died somewhere. But uh, this throne comes with a curse. He must take a bride <laughs> before he turns 18. Or perish beyond the thought. Um, so he takes his companions to go on a quest to find alternatives and might fall in love with one of them in one of the process. <laughs> I love that so much. This fantasy sounds amazing. Uh, then Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White. It's a sci-fi young adult horror Kind of like a blend between the two, sci-fi and horror. Um, so we have Benji, who's on the run from a cult and a bioweapon, uh, and he gets rescued by this group of LGBT teens, um, whose leader, gorgeous Nick, knows Benji's secret that the bioweapon is mutating him into becoming a monster. Uh, he's allowed to stay as long as he can control the monster. Uh, but in doing so, Benji might find out that Nick has more than just one secret of his own. That sounds so suspenseful and fun and maybe a bit traumatizing? We'll see. That it, I just like the premise. Then, The Sunbearer Trials by Aiden Thomas! I want his other two books as well especially Cemetery Boys. I, yes, please. And this one has to do with mythology as well, which is just... <laughs> uh, so we have 10 semi deuses between the ages of 13 and 18 are selected by Saul, the goddess, the god of the sun himself, uh, as the most trustworthy to compete in the sun bearer trials. Uh, and it's a good deal for the winner because, you know, he gets to bring, they get to bring the light into all the temples and help the people and whatnot, but a bit, a bit of a 
rotten deal for the uh, loser because um, they get sacrificed sacrificed for Saul. Uh, but you know, Theo has never had to worry. Tell tell has never had to worry about that before. Until then, he gets picked. Poor Theo. I hope I hope he. <laughs> no, I know he's gonna be traumatized. <laughs> We're gonna see how it goes. Then Babel by Rebecca as Kwan. I oh okay, because I recently read the Poppy War. Okay, the chunky of a book is over there, and I well first off I I think I found a new like inspiration for writing because the way that uh, she and in interweaves like history into the narrative in such a uh, organic way and the mythology as well like in such an organic way amazing i love it um and then oh god i there's a specific a specific scene in in the poppy war that i was reading on the train and it just made me Yeah, but anyway, Babel is about this Chinese orphaned boy in the 1828 taken to London by the mysterious, mysterious Professor Lao, Lovewell, and he trains uh, for years in Latin, Ancient Greek, and Chinese for in preparation for when he gets to enroll in the Oxford University prestig prestigious Royal Institution of Translation. Aka Babel. Um, but for Robin, serving that institution might be a betrayal <laughs> to the motherland. Uh, so as he's, his studies progress, he is caught between Babel and the Hermes Society, or an, an organization dedicated to sabotaging the silver working that supports, that supports imperial expansion. So when Britain starts to pursue, pursue a war against China, uh, Robin must decide what is he willing to sacrifice to take Babel down. The cover of this was revealed just the other day, I think two days ago, and it is so pretty. It is so pretty. And I am so waiting for this book already it comes out in august of next year and it's so long to wait for it and i have so many more but like i if i talk more it's gonna be an hour long video so th these are the ones that are like most most anticipated thank you so much for watching i'll see you in another video and goodbye